here in Denver, Colorado, as we get set for the Broncos and the Chiefs. On a cold day, temperature just 17 degrees, one of the five coldest they've ever played here at Mile High. And it feels like temp of just seven degrees as Brandon McManus gets set to kick it off. The Broncos won the toss and deferred. J.U. Chesson is the deep man for Kansas City. And he will elect to bring it out. And Chesson will not reach the 15 yard line wrapped up immediately. So here we go. The anticipated debut of Patrick Mahomes. They traded up to get him in the first round with the 10th pick overall. He was so impressive as a senior last year at Texas Tech. It's been a long time. You got to go back to Todd Blackledge, the last time they drafted a quarterback this high in Kansas City. And he's going to be the first rookie quarterback for them to start a game in 38 years. A little snow beginning to fall here in Denver, and the first pass from Mahomes incomplete. He's getting his opportunity, Alex Smith, uh, and some of the other starters resting today for KC. I got to watch him in the preseason against Seattle. Can do so many things well. Such a strong arm, a rare arm strength. Comes out, can sling it, makes all the passes. Has good touch on his deep ball, said that's his favorite pass. How much has he learned from Alex Smith? Can he execute this offense? Can he get under go, center? Go. Something he didn't do in college at all. Empty set here on second down. And Mahomes got that strong arm incomplete looking for Demarcus Robinson. And for Kansas City offensively, as we mentioned, some guys will be out today. Others will continue to start, including Mitchell Schwartz, who will start for his 95th straight game. Akeem Hunt likely to see a lot of carries today. Sharkandrick West is not here out with an illness. We do not expect, uh, according to what the coaches told us yesterday, to see much of Kareem Hunt, who's having that outstanding rookie campaign at tailback. Third down and 10. Mahomes deep down the middle, and it is caught. Hauled in by the tight end, Demetrius Harris. Still on the move all the way down to the Denver 35-yard line, and we've got a flag down on the play. Looks like it's going to be offsides on Denver. That's why everybody's so excited about Patrick Mahomes. Offsides. Defense. Number 58. Yep, Kelly's the climb. There's game is the first down, Kansas City. You can see the arm strength and the touch that he has, the ability to go downfield. Pretty good coverage here. A small window to get it in there, but before the safety gets over, and a beautiful throw by Mahomes. Apparently none of the Bronco defenders touched him when he first went down, so Harris able to get up and run for more. 51 yards on the game. Play action to Kareem Hunt, and out into the flat incomplete looking for J.U. Chesson. Defensively for the Denver Broncos, who have already been eliminated from the playoffs. Uh, Domata Pecco, the 12-year veteran, will anchor that front line. Of course, Von Miller, the most sacks uh, in the NFL since he joined the league seven years ago, one of those outside backer spots. And Aqib Tlaib headed to his fifth consecutive Pro Bowl. Third time Kansas City has gone with the empty backfield already on this opening drive. Now they're bringing a running back back. So we are seeing Kareem Hunt here early on, the rookie out of Toledo. Big hole up the middle, breaking tackles all the way into the end zone. Touchdown, Kansas City. He started off the season doing it against New England, finishing up doing it against Denver. That puts him into the lead for the NFL and rushing for the year. He has been a difference maker for this offense. The ability to run the ball sets up the play action. Such a find for this rookie. Came into the game, Jay, 13 yards behind Todd Gurley in a chase for the rushing title. Gurley was not expected to be playing this afternoon for the L.A. Rams, and that 35-yard touchdown run now puts Kareem Hunt ahead of him. Extra point is good. Early lead for KC. 
Kareem Hunt busting through, bursting into the end zone, getting Kansas City the lead. Kansas City quickly on the board in under a minute. Kareem Hunt, the 35-yard touchdown run to score. And with that run, he passed Todd Gurley. Both Gurley and uh, Bell were inactive today. So Hunt moves into the top spot, looking to become the second rookie in a row to win the rushing title of the NFL after Ezekiel Elliott last year with Dallas. It's been such a find for them. Gives this offense so many. He can catch the ball to the backfield, explosive. Don't expect to see him much throughout the day. West didn't make the trip, so that's why Hunt had to be active. D'Angelo Henderson in the end zone, and he'll take a knee for the Broncos. So it's now time for Denver second-year quarterback Paxton Lynch, the first-round pick last year, but he's been unable to win the starting job, hampered by injuries this year. This is just the second start of the season. He got the start at Oakland, but then got re-injured. So he's probably playing Jay today to try and convince Denver that he should stay in town next year he has to prove to John Elway that he can be the quarterback of the future they have a huge decision to make in the draft this year this game will go a long way he's gonna give it to CJ Anderson who starts the day 54 yards shy of 1000 for the season but a lot of attention on Paxton Lynch who's one and two as a starter High expectations coming in here last year. They thought he was going to be the man of the future. He's tall. He has a smooth, high release. He's got a big arm as well. For a big guy, he can really run. So he has a lot of tangibles that he can do. He has to prove that he can run the offense effectively, not turn the ball over, which is something they've struggled with all year. Turnover's an issue and consistency at that quarterback spot. A big issue as well. One of the bright spots for them out of this rookie class, their first round pick, Garrett Bowles. He's been their starter all year at left tackle. And Demarius Thomas with a big day receiving over 100 yards. He could reach 1,000 again for the sixth year in a row. Has had a tremendous career here with Denver. And both he and Emmanuel Sanders uh, affected certainly by the the carousel at quarterback. This is the fifth change, by the way, they've had this season going back to Lynch. Who looks for Thomas. Incomplete. Philip Gaines had the coverage. Little press coverage. A lot of young guys going to get an opportunity. Definitely contact there with Thomas. Could have been called. Probably should have been called. And instead, it's going to be fourth down, and the Broncos will have to punt it away with Riley Dixon. The electrifying DeAnthony Thomas back deep around his own 28-yard line. Dixon, the second-year pro out of Syracuse. This one's going to be short, and will take a big Kansas City bounce out across the 45-yard line. The Chiefs scored on their first drive. More of Patrick Mahomes on the other side. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. That's transparency. T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. And by the new Jeep Compass. Extra layers, whatever you need on a very cold day in Denver. Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs in town now in his fifth season, heading back to the playoffs. Amongst active coaches, only Bill Belichick in New England has more wins than Andy Reid does. And a pass to Anthony Sherman, the seventh-year man out of Connecticut. From Patrick Mahomes. You're going to see a face mask yeah. here added on to the end of that reception by Sherman. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 51. It's a 15 yard penalty to the end of the run. First down, Kansas City. It's on Todd Davis. Gets the hand up there and it stays up there. 
He didn't really grasp on, but if they went in and then he just dropped it down, they wouldn't have called it because it stayed up there in the face. That's why they called it. Expect to see a lot of Anthony Sherman today. He could get some carries, receptions. A lot of young guys going to get opportunities. And one in particular would be Mahomes. We've seen a lot of empty sets. He's joined in the backfield there by Akeem Hunt, and there's an interception. Darian Stewart with the pick. There's a flag thrown behind Stewart. Then Mahomes has a big pass play that leads to a touchdown and now an interception. The flag is going to be on the return. The interception is going to count. Something Kansas City has done such a phenomenal job of avoiding turnovers. After the interception and during the return, Illegal block in the back, and the defense over 34. The 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Denver. Mahomes has such a strong arm. He's moving, he trusts that arm, just overthrows his receiver. And when he looks at Alex Smith and what he's done, he's been so good at protecting the ball. That's their 10th turnover on the year as a team. And there's See the right here, there. the penalty. Whenever you're coming back, and the, whoever you're blocking, if it's a return, kickoff return, special teams, or defensive return, never put your hands in there. Always goes against you. Just the 10th turnover of the season. That still ties the NFL record for fewest in a year, but when you talk about Patrick Mahomes, you, you talk about the arm strength, and then you talk about some of the decision-making that the youngster will have to learn. And, the uh, starting lineup for this Kansas City defense, Nunez Roches will get the call along that front line. They are really excited about 6'7", 290-pound rookie, Pano Passigno out of Louisville, and Leon McQuay, a rookie out of USC, will also get a look as they will play a lot of their younger guys here today. And Demarius Thomas came off to the sideline of hurt. A little slant to Jordan Taylor out to the 29-yard line. And Demarius Thomas, who has been such a mainstay at wide receiver over uh, the last uh, seven or eight years. Paxton Lynch said he was the guy that really took him under his wings, that acted as a mentor for him, that had a lot of words of encouragement. It's been such an up-and-down year. A lot of difficulties for Paxton Lynch, and Demarius Thomas has been there for him. Trying to get to a 1,000-yard receiving season with some work still to do. The handoff here is to C.J. Anderson. At 5-10, and 10, it's, uh, it's been a rough go for the Broncos. They're going to miss out on the playoffs for the second year in a row. This time, however, under first-year head coach Vance Joseph. And, of course, there's been all kinds of talk about whether or not Joseph will be back for a second season, uh, one of the first decisions that will be ha have to be made uh, after the game today. Uh, uh, John Elway and Joe Ellis and uh, the staff here in the front office, they'll run it again with C.J. Anderson. Rameek Wilson with the tackle. We got a chance to talk to John Elway, and he said, I forgot how bad it felt to lose five or to lose ten games, to be five and ten. He said it only happened to him one other time in his career, and it's a big decision they have to make. They haven't had a coach only coach for one year here with the Broncos. The players love Vance Joseph. He's a friendly guy to be around. He's enjoyable. He tells the truth. That's just the fourth losing season here in 20 years with the Broncos, who of course uh, were Super Bowl champs just a few years ago. The problem isn't just the losses, it's the way that they lost yeah. the games. The double digit losses, not being competitive, not having guys go out there and give everything you can give. And offensively, it's really the turnovers. That's been the huge issue for them. 31 giveaways this year, 20 interceptions, 11 fumbles. The quarterbacks have let this team down. Good news for Denver, Demarius Thomas is back out on the field. Well, Bunch set to the left with Thomas out of the bottom of your screen. Play action with Devontae Booker, and Lynch gonna scramble and run with it. Out across the 40 to the 43, and again it was Rameek Wilson. 
A lot of young guys in this Chiefs secondary getting the first opportunity. An excellent job in coverage. Nowhere for Paxton Lynch to go with the ball. But at six foot seven, 245 pounds, he can move. You know, you and I both covered him in college and did a couple games and saw all those things that made Denver draft him in the first round. The ability to throw the ball down the field, the ability to take off and run, to, even though he's such a big guy. Vance Joseph and Bill Musgrave uh, did make a few tweaks to the game plan this week to sort of play to Paxton's strengths. Here's the pitch to Booker and Devante across midfield, and he's got the first down into KC territory, cut down by McQuay, and a gain of 14. Booker has earned his time. You can see a great job blocking, creating the seam. McQuay ended up getting hurt, number 34 there for the Chiefs at the end of that play. As he uh, tried to take down Booker, the second year man out of Utah, Devontae was actually their leading rusher last year after C.J. Anderson got hurt. Lynch, quick on the release, Thomas has it down inside the 25 yard line and another first down Denver. And look at Paxton Lynch all fired up. Excellent job by Lynch, throwing on time, hitting that back foot and then delivering the ball right where Thomas could catch it. Watch as Paxton Lynch comes back. As soon as he gets to the set, just stents and delivers the ball. That's what they want to see. Bill Musgrave said, I want to see him be comfortable. I want to see him take drops, throw on time, protect the ball, be accurate with it. 19 yards on that hookup. Thomas now with 29 yards receiving on the day. Lynch out of the gun, lofting it towards the end zone, broken up incomplete, intended for Isaiah McKenzie. Keith Reeser had the coverage. Pretty good throw here by Lynch. Nice touch, giving his receiver a chance to go up and make the play. Had a chance in the Oakland game that he played last on the first drive, and he missed a shot deep. Well, tonight, a special edition of 60 Minutes about people who are making a difference in America. Tonight on 60 Minutes, only CBS. 7-0 Kansas City here in the first, but Denver on the move. Anderson picks up a couple more. And Leon McQuay, the rookie out of Southern Cal who was getting the start Unfortunately for the Chiefs, headed to the locker room. And Bob Sutton had told us he couldn't wait to see what he did when the lights were on, that he has unbelievable energy, plays hard, has great athleticism, and unfortunately, he's already out of the game, and they're not going to get to see him play. And so many guys, they want to see what they do with this opportunity now. C.J. Anderson is the offset back on third down and nine. Thomas at the bottom of your screen. Lynch throws it the other way, and it's going to be short of the first down. The catch is made by Jordan Taylor. Philip Gaines with a nice hit, and now a decision make to make for the Broncos, and they're going to kick the field goal. Tried to run a clear out route and then bring the slant underneath. Get Taylor the ball. Watch here as they run the clear out route, and then they try to bring him underneath. Get the ball. The Chiefs do an excellent job. Running through the traffic and making the play, getting the stop. This will be a 36-yard attempt for Brandon McManus. And he's got it. So Denver on the board, a 7-3 Kansas City lead. You're watching the NFL on CBS. 522 to go here in the first quarter, 7-3 Kansas City over Denver. The Chiefs back-to-back -back AFC West champs. A uh, couple of years of dominance. They've won 15 of their last 16, in fact, against the AFC West, including four in a row over Denver. J.U. Chesson gonna bring it out of the end zone. Get out across the 20 and spinning his way out to about the 26-yard line. 
Well, Demarius Thomas pulled oh, double oh, duty at oh. the Broncos holiday party for the Denver Boys and Girls Club, which was held at the Pat Bowen Fieldhouse. Along with about a dozen teammates, Santa DT helped deliver gifts to more than 100 children who come from food insecure and homeless families. It was certainly a night to remember for all. Demarius Thomas uh, still trying to get things done for Denver. They trail 7-3, and it's back to work for Patrick Mahomes. I will the youngster deal with the adversity of an interception and now an errant snap from Zach Fulton. That was not on Mahomes at all. That was all Fulton snaps it over his head. Mahomes wasn't ready for the snap. It was a high snap nonetheless. Mahomes did a good job getting back and getting onto it. You can see his eyes. He wasn't looking at the ball. That was actually the backup, my bad there, Jordan Debbie, who was on at center. So now it's second and 22 as the, the Chiefs go, go. continue to rotate guys in and out of the lineup. Mahomes will step up and run with it. We'll get back to about the 17-yard line. You talk about how significant it is that they brought in Patrick Mahomes and used a first-round draft choice. The fewest wins by a drafted quarterback since 1988. How about Kansas City with none? You got to go all the way back to Todd Blackledge in 1987. And not only did they use a first round pick, they traded two yeah. first round picks and a third round. So that's been the question. Is he the quarterback of the future next year? Alex Smith do $17 million. Everybody's been talking about all week. Is this an opportunity for Patrick Mahomes to seize the job for next year? On third and 18, he is sacked by Shelby Harris. See Harris in the middle of your screen, just beating man to man, getting upfield. Mahomes not able to get rid of the ball. It's a great test for Patrick Mahomes. This is a very good defense, second overall in the NFL. A lot of different players are going to be in there. That's tough offensively for a young quarterback. You saw the center snap the ball over his head. 13-year veteran Dustin Colquitt will punt this out of his own end zone. Jordan Taylor back around his own 40. And flags are down. The uh, play clock may have expired there. Delay game. Offense. The five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Colquitt, not much real estate for him in the back of the end zone here. He's at the five-yard line, so he can still take his normal, you're normally at 13 and a half yards, so he's not altering his steps, not altering the depth. 13 and a half is where normal punters line up. They don't want a long, if you get back further, that creates a short edge to get around the corner for the block. High kick by Colquitt, the fair catch by Taylor at his own 45-yard line. 50 yards on that punt and a 7-3 Kansas City lead. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Verizon. Best gifts on the best network. And by U.S. Air Force. Experience more at airforce.com. Uh, Broncos country in the uh, Rocky Mountains here just outside of Denver. And thinking of uh, our uh, good friend Vern Lundquist and his wife Nancy somewhere up there in Steamboat Springs. A very uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to everybody watching with us today. We call him the mayor. Hopefully you had a great <laughs> Christmas. Happy New Year. Oh, a lot of good snow right now up there. Seven to three, Kansas City, the lead over Denver. Paxton Lynch looked pretty good on that last drive that led to the field goal, and he's going to hook up here with tight end Jeff Hyerman. Three for four, 38 yards, made a couple of nice throws, good timing passes, hitting that back foot, letting it go, good accuracy. That's the kind of drives they want to see. Orchestrate this offense, understand where to go with the ball, make good decisions, be accurate. 53! On second and short. 
This is Anderson burrowing his way for a couple, and that should be good to move the chains. What are your thoughts on Paxton Lynch, for better or for worse? Well, I talked about the height. He's got great mobility and arm strength, durability. He's gotten hurt each time he's had an opportunity, especially this year. Accuracy and vision, understanding where to go with the ball, seeing things as they happen on the field. We've got a Broncos player injured, and that is C.J. Anderson, the running back. And we'll be back in 30 seconds after this from Fidelity Investments. Well, this is one of those moments you just hate to see. A guy like C.J. Anderson who's worked so hard to stay healthy to get to 1,000 yards rushing this year. He hadn't gotten there yet, Jay. You see him grinding the legs, continuing to drive, just kind of gets bent back over awkwardly. You see at the end of this play, just get pushed over backwards, and his knees are bent back awkwardly. Hopefully he's okay. I'd love to see him get over 1,000 yards. A guy who really deserves it. Sitting at 960. This is the first time for CJ that he's actually made it through 16 games to play in the finale. Healthy. Replaced by Devontae Booker and Paxton Lynch will hit Thomas underneath. Third catch today for Demarius. Tackled by Terrence Smith. Good job so far by this offensive line, keeping the pocket clean for Lynch, ability to step up and deliver throws. Been an outstanding career for Thomas. Some frustrations at times this year with all the problems at quarterback, and yet he is still within striking distance of a sixth straight 1,000-yard season. You know, in the last six years, only Antonio Brown at Pittsburgh has more catches and receiving yards than Thomas does. And this is Booker stuffed at the line by Justin Hamilton. They made the change at offensive coordinator early December. Gave Bill Musgrave the job. He came in and said, I want much cleaner offense. I want to take care of the football. That was the big issue. And Vance Joseph yeah. talked to us about that. We were moving the ball. We were getting yards, scoring points, but we were turning it over too much and losing games as a result. It was a tough decision for Vance Joseph. Made the move to Bill Musgrave. Yeah, averaging two turnovers per game. And Mike McCoy is telling us that was the first guy he called when he got the head coaching job to come in here as the OC. And they had to part ways. Final seconds of this first quarter, and Lynch incomplete across the middle looking for Benny Fowler. One second left on the clock here. And the punter will have to come on again, Riley Dixon. Pocket collapse and didn't have the ability to step up and let it rip. Only really had one guy he could go to on that route. D'Anthony Thomas back at the 15-yard line for KC. Dixon's boot. Chases Thomas back to the five where he makes the catch and is tackled immediately at the six by Marcus Rios. Seven to three, Kansas City through one. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Back here in Denver and uh, an unfortunate scene that looks like uh, what uh, would appear to be a very serious Injury here to DeAnthony Thomas. Uh, the doctors and athletic trainers out there quickly after he made the catch on the punt here and then was tackled by Marcus Rios. He brought the card out now for DeAnthony. Fourth year man out of Oregon. A return guy today uh, playing some receiver, playing some running back. And we'll be back in 30 seconds right after this. Back here in Denver where uh, they continue to care for DeAnthony Thomas, the Kansas City return man, as they try and position the cart to help uh, assist him back to the locker room. We can also report uh, from the KC side in the concussion protocol is Leon McQuay, who we saw go out earlier in the game. And 
And uh, from the Denver side, Broncos saying that uh, C.J. Anderson will be able to return as they help Thomas onto the cart here. Hopefully he's okay. When you're Kansas City's position, you're locked into the fourth seed coming into this game. This is why they rested so many guys, because you don't want to get an injury that has an impact on next week. Thomas had 14 receptions, 143 yards, two touchdowns this year. He can play wide receiver and running back and returner. So a guy they can use in a lot of different ways, a tough loss for them and obviously for DeAnthony Thomas. For this game in particular, they only came into the game with four wide receivers. That leaves them with only three wide receivers for this game. And only two running backs unless they opt to go back to Kareem Hunt. We saw him with one carry today. Which I wouldn't do. Yeah. No matter what happens, I don't want Hunt to have to go back in there. I don't want to risk losing Kareem Hunt. If I don't have him next week, then it's going to be very hard for me to win that playoff game. He's the key to your offense, to everything you've done this year, the success you've had offensively. So no matter what, I, I'll give the ball to Anthony Sherman 25 times rather than, than bring Kareem Hunt back in the game. Alex Smith. Travis Kelsey uh, not expected to play today, and Tyreek Hill uh, out due to a death in the family, so he is not uh, expected to see any time either. And it will be Akeem Hunt now in the backfield with Patrick Mahomes. Seen a little bit of both so far from Patrick. Good deep ball down the middle, and then an interception on a deep ball down the middle. And here's a run to Hunt. Out across the 10, wrapped up by Darian Stewart. This is what you were talking about, the good and the bad. That is a beautiful throw, excellent touch, right in the receiver's hands, and then a bad throw, overthrows his receiver after the snap over his head, then he gets sacked, and it's a progression, learning. There's so much he had to do this year. Matt Nagy, their offense coordinator, said he's got confidence, is better, precision, her presence in the huddle has been better. Out of the gun, Mahomes into the flat. J.U. Chesson, the rookie out of Michigan, out across the 20. We've got an update from New York with James Brown and Boomer Esiason. Oakland would like to close out with a win, just like Monday night, guys. Amari Cooper comes up big. How about this throw from Derek Carr right down the center of the field, split in the secondary of the Chargers. That's 87 yards. Raiders tied up at 7. What a throw by Derek Carr. Back to Beth and Jay in Denver. Thanks, guys. Uh, the four seeds are locked up, but still a chase for the wild card in the AFC. Uh, the Chargers needing to beat Oakland. One of the other three teams, Jay, will be headed to Arrowhead Stadium next weekend to play Kansas City. Casey will be hosting either Baltimore, that's the biggest likelihood if Baltimore wins, then the Ravens would head to Kansas City. Tennessee or Buffalo, the other two teams that could possibly face Andy Reid's side. And this is a Kansas City Chiefs team that I think has as good a chance as anybody in the AFC, including Pittsburgh and New England, to go and to make a run. Because of the weapons, their ability to not turn the ball over offensively with Alex Smith, that is the third dropped pass by a Kansas City receiver. That's the running back, Akeem Hunt, and it's third down. It is a tough situation for Patrick Mahomes because it's much like a preseason game where you're coming in, you're not throwing to receivers who have been in there. You're playing a lot of young guys on the offensive line at the receiver position, at running back. Another bad snap here from Jordan Devy. Again, it looked like Mahomes wasn't ready. Again, it was a high snap. Some of the challenges facing the rookie quarterback today in his debut. Movement on the right side. Parker Anger, who was getting the start, start today. Uh, offense, number 79. My guard penalty, still a third down. Get your right guard here. It's going to move early. And we talked about all the different guys getting an opportunity to play, the lack of continuity. Cadence, everything else. That's something that Patrick Mahomes told us it was his biggest struggle, being able to get the play and then recite the play because it's something he didn't do in college. He had to practice it. He had to continue to go through all the semantics of being able to run the offense, call the plays, and be effective. 
Third down and 14. Mahomes gets the pass away and he's got the first down. Eludes the sack and then still has the presence to see Albert Wilson. When you talk about rare arm strength, you can see right here, no ability to step into the throw, but he can just let it rip and throw a dime to his receiver, complete the pass, perfect accuracy. And when you have somebody wrapped around your legs and you're not able to step into the throw at all, that's why everyone was so excited, not only in the Chiefs organization, but when you talk to general managers around the league like I did even this week, they love this kid. There are a number of teams that still are reluctant that they didn't have him. He'll roll him out a little bit and he'll throw it away. How about Jay's extra points right now? What you got for us, Jay? Well, when you watch Patrick Mahomes and the things he can do, rolling out, coming, getting his shoulders square, and then just letting it rip, the ability to throw back across his body and the arm strength and accuracy to deliver those balls. And he throws a really good deep ball. The ability to step back, the two pre uh, throws in the preseason against Seattle. I was doing that game. Dan Fouts was so impressed with Patrick Mahomes. He can do everything you want. He's just gonna, it's gonna take time. The handoff to Akeem Hunt. I mean, he was a terrific athlete. You go back to his high school days when he played baseball and basketball as well as football. Probably could have been a college basketball player. He was actually drafted into Major League Baseball, opted to stick with football. Said he threw in the mid-90s. Said his dad still says he can throw <laughs> faster than him. His dad, Pat Mahomes, an 11-year MLB veteran. And his son, Patrick, four for 10 so far with the interception. Looking for a third down conversion here. Out of the backfield, Akeem Hunt trying to get out to the line to gain with Brandon Marshall in hot pursuit. And let's see where the spot is. That was one of Let the things shorten. we wanted to see, Beth, from Patrick Mahomes. Was he going to be able to check to the right plays? How much has he learned? You saw him go up and audible, check to this screen. They came up just short, but I think that was a good decision. Understanding the defense, knowing where to go with the ball, giving your running back an opportunity to get the first down. On fourth and one, Kansas City will punt it to Jordan Taylor back at the 15-yard line. Dustin Colquitt averaging about 44 yards per kick this year. Hasn't had one blocked all season. Taylor waving the fair catch and lets it bound into the end zone. 10.38 to go in the first half, a 7-3 KC lead. You're watching the NFL on CBS. 7-3, Kansas City with the lead here in Denver and a couple of young quarterbacks, the first-year man, Patrick Mahomes, and the second-year guy, Paxton Lynch. Beth Bowens and Jay Feely here in Denver. Your thoughts on these two guys? Uh, they are going to get a good long look today for their coaching staffs. Both quarterbacks have had one effective drive. Patrick Mahomes made the big mistake throwing the interception. Paxton Lynch hasn't done that. He's been effective, making good decisions. I like what he's done so far. On second and six, Lynch with a lot of time finds his man across the middle for a first down out close to the 40-yard line. It's Benny Fowler. A decent pass there for Paxton Lynch, but if he steps into this ball, you're going to see him kind of drift on this throw. If he leads his receiver, that might be a big play. He throws a little bit behind. Fowler has to slow down and catch it to secure the catch. Isn't able to continue running and maybe get a really big play. 14 yards there to Fowler in its first and 10. C.J. Anderson back on the field for the Broncos. He'll pick up a few off the right edge. Rameek Wilson with the tackle, the third-year pro out of Georgia. There's the QB comparison for you. How about Lynch at 70% so far to start out? We asked Bill Musgrave what the expectations were. He said clean football, get in a rhythm, put him in good spots. That's exactly what they've done so far. They'll run Anderson again out across the 45, about a yard shy of the first down there. 
C.J. Anderson. Could be a big moment for him in this offensive line and what's been a frustrating season. Still a chance for him to get his first 1,000-yard rushing campaign. It would be the first here in Denver in five years. He worked so hard in the offseason after getting hurt in years past, wanted to get through an entire season. Lynch on the scramble, going to get caught behind the line. Breaking tackles to pick up the first down. That's a six foot seven quarterback making moves, <laughs> getting around people and getting a first down. When you look at Paxton Lynch and you say, why would somebody use a first round pick on him? What makes teams want a guy like this? This is what makes him special. The ability to run the ball, to scramble, to make plays with his legs, play action, a little naked bootleg, getting him out. It's not there. An excellent job of making something out of nothing and getting a first down. Three Chiefs had a chance there to force the punt. And still ah. a fresh set of downs here for Lynch. Quick release, Demarius Thomas. And a gain of 10 more. Fourth catch for Demarius, 40 yards now on the day. When Kansas City struggled in the middle of the year, they started out 5-0, and and then they went 1-6. The defense struggled. Bob Sutton made changes. He took his defensive line. Now he runs this Rex Ryan type scheme. That's where he learned it in New York. They went to two or one guy on the offense or the defensive line, bringing all sorts of fronts. Lynch to Jordan Taylor. May have picked up a couple of there. Uh, Paxton now nine for 12. There's a look at Bob Sutton, the DC in Kansas City. Guy that I played for when I was with the Jets. Really enjoyable guy. What they've done so well the last three games is takeaways. Nine takeaways yep. in the last three three games. You know, not having a guy like Marcus Peters and Ron Parker in there, Derek Johnson, that's big for that defense. Marcus Peters so amazing. Not only interceptions, but creating fumbles, getting the ball. Yeah, those guys you mentioned, they're all out today. They'll be back for the playoffs next week. Time again for Lynch. And he's got it to Isaiah McKenzie, and that'll be another first down. Look at this from the first 12 games to the last three and the takeaways down the bottom. Yeah, you can see the nine takeaways. Everything that Bob Sutton does is predicated on turning the ball over. Get pressure up front. Don't allow a quarterback to be comfortable. Show him lots of different fronts. Many different players dropping, bringing pressure, and then creating turnovers. You go back a few more games, too. You go back six games. They have not allowed an opponent to score over 20 points. They were in trouble midseason. And have uh, rallied here late in the year to wrap up the AFC West and head back to the playoffs. When you can run the ball and not turn the ball over offensively, and you can make teams go the length of the field and they get turnovers defensively that's a recipe for success adding the fact that they have excellent special teams that's why they're back in the playoffs and that's why it's a team that'll be very dangerous in the playoffs they you look at the beginning of the year they beat new england and they, they beat philadelphia yep. your two top seeds might have to go back through new england at some point in the playoffs the patriots winners today they will be the number one seed Dropping it off for D'Angelo Henderson. He's breaking tackles inside the five. Diving for the pylon. And he's in. Touchdown Denver, 29 yards. He's going to set up a nice little screen. And get Henderson out. Some blockers in front, breaking tackles. And Vance Joseph said they wanted to get Henderson a look. He had an excellent preseason, hasn't had an opportunity throughout the year to get the ball often at all. Only two rushes and one reception coming into the game. But he told us how good he is, and they think a lot of this young man, not a big guy, five foot seven, but a powerful back with the ability to run through tackles. Hang on to that football, D'Angelo. His first career touchdown on the screen pass. D'Angelo Henderson, the rookie out of Coastal, takes it the distance.
Oh, and a late flag thrown. At the end of that extra yeah, point there, the, the flag the came out. Pete Blakeman is our uh, referee today. He's going over to talk to Vance Joseph. He's asking if he wants to put it out of the kickoff. Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense with leverage. That 15-yard penalty will be attached to the end of the kickoff, and the PAT is good. So when you leap up to block, you can't use somebody to push yourself up. You can't land on somebody. You see the leverage play in the middle of your screen, leaping up right there, and then he lands on the blocker. That's a penalty. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the 2018 Ford F-150. It doesn't just raise the bar, it is the bar. New York Life. With the right guidance, everyone can be good at life. And by Exxon Mobil. So after that penalty, Jay, a really short field here for Denver. I would kick an onside kick. They're going to squib it. So they're going to get the ball at the 26-yard line. If you kick an onside kick there, you're kicking it from the 50. If you don't get it, they get it at the 35. That's only 10 yards difference. Why not kick the onside kick with the opportunity yeah. to get the ball back? You're 5 and 10. What do you have to lose? By the way, that's Leon McQuay, who has been cleared of the concussion protocol and has returned for uh, Kansas City. Under five minutes to go here in this first half. And a 10-7 Denver lead. Kansas City already locked in as the number four seed. And their score update, they'll either host Baltimore, Tennessee, and Buffalo. Baltimore losing right now while Tennessee and Buffalo are taking care of their business. If Baltimore and Tennessee win, they are the two wild cards. Buffalo and the Chargers need some help. And the catch is made there by Albert Wilson. Beautiful throw by Patrick Mahomes. Drifting away, falling back, has the ability. Watch him as he's drifting away from this ball, and then he has the touch to throw it into a tight window again. See at the top of your screen, just a tight window that he drops that ball into. Perfect throw. 20 yards, Mahomes now 50%. He's over 100 yards passing. He's got Hunt and Sherman in the backfield, and now they'll shift. Off the pump. Mahomes, head up. And he'll throw it short here across midfield. It's going to be incomplete, looking for Chesson. Watch this hit that Patrick Mahomes takes in there. He was looking deep. It wasn't open, so he went short. That's from Von Miller. Wasn't that bad. <laughs> There's Alex Smith looking on. He has had the best regular season of his career. In fact, the best QBR in the NFL this season. He's resting today to get ready for the playoffs. Akeem Hunt down inside the 45 for a first down. Zaire Anderson with the tackle. And now Akeem Hunt may have been hurt on the play. We have not seen Kareem Hunt since his touchdown run early. They wanted to make him inactive because West didn't make the trip. They had him active in case they need him. He also got the record, which is a bonus for him. Or not the record, he's got the lead. Yep. The NFL lead in rushing. They'll go with Sherman. Play action, Mahomes stepping up, finding a man inside the 30-yard line. It's Wilson getting a big block on the edge. J.U. Chesson clearing some room out for him in a gain of 24. Every time he goes under center, he goes with play action. Not once did he drop back in preseason and throw the ball without doing play action from under center, but a nice throw. There's a nice block by J.U. Chesson at Michigan. Chesh Michigan. You. There you go. Go blue. <laughs> but Wilson's been productive all year. 32 receptions, over 400 yards coming into this game. 
Backs up Tyreek Hill. Dropped a sure touchdown last week against Miami. Play clock is winding down. Mahomes again to Wilson. Down to the 10-yard line. Well, Patrick Mahomes, after the early interception, is uh, settling in nicely. You're going to have adversity as a quarterback, so how do you handle that? Do you come back and get gunshot because you throw an interception, you overthrow a receiver? He hasn't done that at all. All the two times now I've done production meetings with him, very impressed with how he handles himself, yeah. his maturity. I think that goes back a lot to growing up with a father who was a professional athlete, being around his godfather, Latroy Hawkins, who was a professional athlete for over 20 years. I'll let this run down to the two-minute warning. The two-minute warning. Second and one down in the red zone for Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Domino's. Order online at dominoes.com. And by Tostitos. Tostitos gives back to Salvation Army. Back here in Denver, and the Broncos leading the Chiefs 10-7, but Kansas City on the move under the direction of rookie quarterback Patrick Mahomes. Second and one from the 10, and they will hand it off to Anthony Sherman, who gets his first carry in over two years. They are thin at the running back position with Hunt resting and West out sick. It's been a struggle throughout the season for Kansas City in the red zone, uh, fourth worst in the league. They haven't turned the ball over, but they haven't scored when they've gotten into the red zone. That's been a big issue for them. That's why Harrison Butker has attempted 40 <laughs> field goals despite missing the first month of the season. Wasn't on the Chiefs yet. Set a new franchise record for makes. Right now they're thinking about six, first and goal. Mahomes. Going to run for it, diving for the pylon, and Patrick Mahomes has his first career NFL touchdown on a six-yard run. Not a designed run, but Mahomes looked downfield. He stepped out there. They're going to look at this. Ball's probably going to be at the yep. one-yard line. You can see right there where he stepped out of bounds. They're going to have to bring the offense back out here. As it would appear that Mahomes was out early. they got to look at where the ball was as he was reaching toward that pylon when the foot stepped out of bounds. After review of the play, the quarterback stepped out of bounds with the ball positioned at the one and a half yard line. He put the ball at the goal line at the one and a half and second down at that time. Here's another look. You can see the left foot right there. Out of bounds and the ball just outside the one when he stepped out of bounds. A nice play by Patrick Mahomes though. So it'll be second and goal. Down three. Denver eliminated from the playoffs. Kansas City assured of the four seed and a home game next weekend as Mahomes gets the play from the sideline. And the rookie in his debut out of the gun. They run a little RPO run pass option here. The give is to Sherman stuffed on the initial attempt and the second attempt is good. And the seventh year pro out of UConn has his first career rushing touchdown. Anthony Sherman does the grinding, does all the dirty work, gets into the end zone, reaches over, second effort, third effort, for all the blocking, everything he has to do as a fullback. <laughs> it's great to see him finally get an opportunity to get in the end zone. Jay's playing in his 80th straight game. That's the most among fullbacks in the NFL. And a nice reward with some guys resting and some guys sick today. Getting to carry the mail. I roomed with him in training camp his rookie year. 
So I broke him in. I'm going to take a little credit for that run. <laughs> Extra point attempt from Harrison Butker having that outstanding rookie campaign. And a nice moment for Sherman, and the Chiefs are back on top 14 to 10. We're coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Join JB, Phil, Nate, Boomer, and Coach Cower for all the latest NFL scores and highlights. That's all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Andy Reid opting to rest uh, some of his star players, but uh, not resting on an opportunity to get a 10-win season and keep that momentum going. Uh, after uh, they hit a real rough patch midway through the season. You talked to the, the hot start, uh, Jay, that included that win over uh, uh, New England, but then losing six of seven before rallying to win their last three games. And during that losing streak, those six games that they lost, there was a lot of talk about benching Alex Smith and bringing Patrick Mahomes in. But Alex Smith has had an unbelievable year. You said yep. earlier he's in front of Brady with the best quarterback rating in the NFL, which is shocking. He hasn't turned the ball over. He's moved this offense effectively. D'Angelo Henderson for Denver. We're across the 25. And out to about the 29-yard line. And Paxton Lynch will head back out there. And we've got another uh, injured player for Kansas City. That's Phillip Gaines, the fourth-year man out of Rice who uh, got the start today with Marcus Peters and Ron Parker inactive in that secondary. Gaines has played a lot this year. 29 tackles, two tackles for a loss in the year. They had depth in that secondary, although they've been trying to find answers. Every cornerback on that roster that they've started has been benched at some point in the season, including even Marcus Peters when he was suspended. Yeah. Came in with that right arm to try to make the tackle. Kind of got caught up. I remember they lost Eric Berry uh, in the season opener. They made the move to pick up Darrell Revis as a free agent late in the season. Some of the moves they've made in the secondary. Gains in some discomfort. I think they're pointing towards the locker room with just over a minute to go to get him back there for some treatment. Well, Saturday we've got an SEC showdown for you as Florida battles Missouri. And then on Sunday, a Big Ten matchup. Michigan State and Ohio State. Great NCAA basketball next weekend on CBS. Well, the Spartans move up to number one after Villanova lost. Got two scoops of hoop for you over the weekend well this is the exact situation that john elway and vance joseph want to see their quarterback paxton lynch in their young quarterback he's got three timeouts there's a minute left can you move this offense down the field he's been effective so far 11 for 14 118 yards hasn't turned the ball over Receiver screen, they're going to let Thomas try and pick up some yards after catch. And he'll get it out to the 40 for a first down, tackled by Kenneth Acker. Five catches, uh, 51 yards for Demarius. Full complement of timeouts here for Denver. Plenty of time to get into field goal range. Lynch down the sideline. Jordan Taylor, terrific catch. Flags are down. Taylor able to haul it in at the 30-yard line. Another excellent throw by Paxton Lynch. Nice touch on the ball, putting it in a position where his receiver can go up and make a play. Pass interference, defense, number 39. Coming to Klein, first down Denver. That's Terrence Mitchell. You can see he doesn't turn his head and go back. Makes contact with the receiver, but a nice job by Taylor going up, making the play, and a good throw by Lynch. And they're in field goal range now. So now you're trying to get a touchdown. Be a little greedy here, but protect, protect the ball. Be smart. You have 33 seconds. All your timeouts. Right 
dropped. Incomplete. Clock stopped at 29 seconds. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. JB, Phil, Nate, Boomer, Coach Cower, they'll have all the latest scores for you, how the playoff picture is shaping up. That's all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Here's Brandon McManus. He's had a tough year. This is a big game for him. He had eight missed field goals this year, a couple inside of 30, his first two misses inside of 30. He struggled this year, was excellent in their Super Bowl run, 10 for 10 in the playoffs. Has a 36-yard field goal already today. Lynch, good protection, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Terrence Smith. I believe it went through the hands of one of his teammates, Rameek Wilson. Wilson turned around to see where it went, and his buddy had it. Lynch was late with this ball. 53 thought he had it. He looks back. Look what I found. I got a ball. I got a pick. <laughs> but Lynch was late with that ball. That's a play you can't make in that position. You're in field goal range. You have the ball at the 30-yard line. If you have an open receiver, go for it, but you have to be on time, and you have to protect the ball. That is the problem with this offense throughout the year. That's the 21st interception they've thrown. From the three quarterbacks. That ends the threat for Denver. Kansas City will take the knee, and they will take the lead into the locker room. In the debut of Patrick Mahomes, and did Denver call a timeout right here? Well, they have all three, so you can, if you're going to take three knees, I can call three timeouts and get this ball back. Some of the guys are already headed to the locker room. Well, they better get them back and bring them back out. Brock Osweiler, the backup quarterback, saying, hey, we may not be done yet. You're in Denver, so you can go back. Both kickers went back to 60 yards and kicked field goals. Mahomes will take the knee. And does Denver burn timeout number two? They will. 14 seconds to go. Looking to force at least a punt here. Mahomes did a good job recognizing that they weren't rushing eating up a couple of seconds that defense has got to get in there they're going to have the ability to call another timeout and get this ball back one of the couple things you could do you could do a fair catch free kick if you have this on the last play or if you have time you could throw one play try to get into field goal range depending on where they punt this ball They will hand it off here to Sherman, who gets out to the 20-yard line. Eight seconds to go. Denver will use that final timeout, and it's fourth down. It's a good job by Vance Joseph calling the timeouts, forcing the punt. You never know. You could get a block punt here. You could get a return for a touchdown. You could get a shank punt. If it's a short punt, he's calling for a fair catch. Yes, that's what I was talking about, the yep. fair catch free kick where you wouldn't be able to rush. So if this ball is around the 50, even to your 45 yard line, you want to fair catch it. Isaiah McKenzie is one of the deep men with Jordan Taylor. McKenzie has had issues all year on punt return. Gets it away. Beauty, that's exactly what he had to do. Excellent job by the veteran Colquitt. Oh, he crushes this one all the way down inside the five yard line. And that will end the half. 77 yards. Dustin Colquitt takes away any field goal opportunity for Denver at the end of the half. 14 to 7, Chiefs. Halftime is next after these first half highlights from Verizon and a word from your local station. Want to stay up to date? Hey Siri, show me football scores. AFC West showdown here in Denver this afternoon and a 14 to 10 lead Kansas City 
over Denver. The Chiefs, of course, already locked into that four spot for the playoffs next weekend. Beth Mullins along with Jay Feely. We talked about the two quarterbacks early on. Both have engineered scoring drives. Jay, both have also, have also thrown a pick today. Yes, yeah, the story of the game. It's all about the future for both of these quarterbacks. Paxton Lynch made the bad decision at the end to throw the interception. I love the way Patrick Mahomes drove his team down the field, almost got in the end zone for the touchdown, but an excellent drive, distributing the ball and handling the blitz. Now let's uh, take a look at the numbers for both Patrick Mahomes making his debut and uh, the first round pick from last year for Denver Paxton Lynch. And Paxton Lynch has to show the Broncos that he can make good decisions, not turn the ball over, that he should be in the conversation for who their quarterback is next year. One of the big decisions uh, for Denver to make. Of course, they'll be uh, talking about whether or not Vance Joseph will return as the head coach next year. And then that uh, quarterback spot will have to be the first thing addressed. Here's a look at the statistics from that first half. About even total yards, a turnover apiece, and the 14-10 lead which included the first career rushing touchdown for Anthony Sherman. And uh, some uh, breaking news, I guess, uh, this afternoon. Cleveland and Jimmy Haslam, the owner of the Browns, announcing that uh, Hugh Jackson will return, even though uh, the Browns went 0-16. And word out of Indianapolis, Chuck Pagano has been relieved of his duties in Indianapolis as the Broncos will run it here with C.J. Anderson. That could be significant news for Kansas City. You're talking about a couple of their assistant coaches, certainly with connections to Chris Ballard, and their names have come up in Indy. Yeah, their offensive coordinator, Matt Nagy, and then yep. their special teams coach, Dave Tobe, who I think is a guy who deserves to be a head coach. You saw John Harbaugh make that move, that transition. Special teams coaches don't get enough consideration. They're the only ones, though, that deal with everything on a team. They deal with blocking schemes, they deal with defense, they get in front of teams, and they present to the entire team. Joe Camillus, another guy down in Jacksonville, is a longtime excellent NFL special teams coach. Plenty of anticipation, and uh, in some parts of Kansas City and Missouri, you might say a little bit of anxiety when you look at uh, what they have done recently in the playoffs. They do have a win under Andy Reid, but uh, just that one playoff victory over the last 24 years since they played in the AFC Championship game in 1993. So anxious to get a win at home and then possibly a trip to New England where they've already proven they can win. They did it to open up the season. If they win, that's where they go. If they win in the first round, they go up to New England, try and duplicate that great win. Yeah. Anderson caught in the backfield. Tonno Passigno, the rookie out of Villanova, making the play. Kansas City Chiefs, their potential opponents. Baltimore losing to Cincinnati. That would open a door for Tennessee or Buffalo. Baltimore's down 17-10 at halftime. Chargers are back on top in their game. Buffalo's up 10-0. Chargers could still get a wild card spot, but they would not be an opponent of the Chiefs. Benny Fowler, the intended receiver there, and that's going to force the punt. Riley Dixon from his own 25-yard line. And the Chiefs will take a look at someone different here. Demarcus, Demarcus Robinson, Robinson yeah. a wide receiver at his own 19. Dixon will chase Robinson back all the way to the 11. Trying to get it back after he lost some yardage and Robinson heads the wrong way. 14 to 10, a lot of green in front of Patrick Mahomes in the Chiefs offense. Back here in Denver, wishing you and yours a very happy new year at a 14-10 lead Kansas City over Denver. Final weekend of the regular season around the NFL playoffs will get underway next weekend, including a date at Arrowhead Stadium for the Kansas City Chiefs. 
still awaiting their opponent in one of the wild card matchups. Patrick Mahomes will hand it off to Anthony Sherman. And a look at Mahomes in that first half on a scoring drive. One of the things he did so well was handle the blitz. Three times Denver blitzed. He was able to handle it, get outside and create with your feet. Thought he had Just his first missed touchdown. His touchdown yeah. Instead, into the belly of the beast, the fullback taking care of it. We're going to see a lot, I think, of Anthony Sherman in the second half. Just the one carry from Kareem Hunt in the first half. Good for 35 yards to give him the rushing lead this year. Mahomes on the deep ball and well overthrowing the intended receiver, Demarcus Robinson. That was Von Miller bearing down on him, welcoming the rookie to the league. Which I think is so, it's so good for him to have to go against somebody like this, to understand one of the elite pass rushers, know where the pressure is coming from, be able to step up and deliver a little confusion between Mahomes and Robinson there. Got to think, Jay, the opponents get a little amped up as well, don't they, when there's so much hype on a, on a rookie oh, from absolutely. the other side? You want to yeah. introduce him to the NFL. Yeah. <laughs> Von Miller would love to get a sack and say, welcome to the NFL, young Our man. <laughs> on third down, Mahomes from the two-yard line swings it out across the 20. And his favorite receiver today has been Albert Wilson, and that's good for a first down. It's Wilson's fifth catch on the day. Again, Mahomes handling the pressure, standing in the pocket, doing a good job. See Wilson come across here. Good break, and then a good ball by Mahomes. Wilson did a nice job coming back to the ball, not waiting on it, catching the ball with his hands. You don't have your top three receivers today. They're being rested, so you find some of the other guys to build up a rapport with. Demetrius Harris, the tight end, fourth year man out of UW Milwaukee makes the grab. That's his second catch today. When we asked Patrick Mahomes, what do you want to see yourself accomplish? He said three things, be efficient, have fun, and win the game. When I played my best, it was when I was having fun. I was having a good time, enjoying myself. It took me a long time, it took me probably to my fifth year to really truly have fun out there not allow the pressure to impact you. Got a first down here. Under pressure. And finds a way to find his man. That's Robinson, who may have been hurt on the catch out across the 40. May have fallen on the football and got the wind knocked out of him. see the arm strength that Patrick Mahomes has. It wasn't able to set his feet there, kind of falling away and just slings the ball and delivers a strike. I thought he was throwing the ball away and delivers a strike and gets the completion. Lots of comparisons, uh, of course, to his idol growing up, a big Brett Favre fan. Certainly Andy Reid knows about Brett, was uh, in Green Bay when they made the trade for Brett Favre. And he, you sense some of that gunslinger, I'm going to take mentality, my chances yeah. mentality, yeah. And you have the arm strength. I talked to yeah. one GM this week. He said he's the strongest arm that he's seen come out in 10 years. Andy Reid also knows how to work uh, with another young quarterback from his days in Philadelphia, Donovan McNabb. Together they work their way into a Super Bowl appearance. Out across midfield for Sherman. What's the scouting report on Mahomes? Well, rare arm. Talked about it all day. Ability to throw on the run. You've seen that. Accurate deep ball. That's a great combination when you have the strong, strong arm and the deep ball. Understanding NFL verbiage. Identifying defenders. He hasn't been under center much. You have seen him in shotgun a lot today. And sometimes you can believe in your arm too much. He overthrew his receiver in the first quarter on the interception. I like his confidence, though. What did he tell you his favorite route? What's his favorite the pass? The deep ball. <laughs> Throw a touchdown. Throw deep. Oh, he did say that. That was his first answer. What's your favorite pass? A, a touchdown. touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a completion there for another first down inside the 40. Such a luxury for him to sit behind Alex Smith and learn. You know, so many times, first-round picks, you move up, you trade draft capital, you feel obligated to play him the ability to sit and learn from a true professional Andrew Reed talks about 
Alex Smith and everything he does, how he studies, how he prepares for Patrick Mahomes to be able to sit there and watch that and not have the pressure of having to come in and play. It's a great luxury to have. He had a great line about Alex. He, he finds solutions to problems, and that's one of the things as a, a youngster uh, you've got to pick up on quickly. Alex Smith, a phenomenal guy to be around as a teammate, approached it the right way, knew that they moved up, and they used all that draft capital to pick a quarterback at his position. And really, we talked to him in the preseason. He said, I'm going to be a little bit looser. Like, what do I have to lose? I'm going to go out. And you saw a more aggressive Alex Smith, partly because of the play calling and his maturation in this system, partly because I think he felt like I have nothing to lose, and he went out and had his best season. And I think, honestly, Alex Smith will be the quarterback of this yeah. team next year. Oh, he's been through it before, right, in San Francisco when Colin Kaepernick was coming up. They ended up trading him to San Francisco. It's a $17 million decision. He's under contract next year, Alex Smith is. That's what he's due to make. There are the numbers. In terms of his career, the best season he's had in yardage, yards per attempt, passing touchdowns, second best completion percentage of his career. Really has an opportunity to solidify that job in the coming weeks with the playoffs looming. They will be at home next weekend. Andy Reid loves him. He, he loves Alex Smith. He's been resolute all year. He's my quarterback. I'm not making a change despite the losses that they had in the middle of the year. Third and eight. Pressure coming. Mahomes gets it away. Sherman out of the backfield. And the spot will be just shy on a hit by Jamal Carter. Excellent job by Mahomes. Again, handling the pressure, seeing where it's coming from, knowing what receiver to go to. That's what they wanted to see. Can you understand the defenses? Know where the pressure is coming. Shaq Barrett coming. You're going to see this right in his face, but he understands where to go with the ball. Has great poise despite the pressure. And they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Timeout called by Denver on a fourth and one from the 29. This will be a 30-second timeout. So you got the rookie quarterback working against the number two rated defense in the NFL this season on a fourth down coming up. I'd like to see him run a little RPO, run, plat, run pass option. Allow Patrick Mahomes to make a decision, put the defense in a bad position where the defensive ends have to collapse, respect the running game, and then get him outside, use his legs. Andy Reid hasn't made this call a whole lot this year, just two for nine on fourth down this season. We got him in shotgun. Trips to the bottom of your screen here. Sherman gets the call. He's got the first down. A day to remember so far for Anthony Sherman with a rushing touchdown and a big fourth down pickup. Well, I talked to him last night after we did our meetings. He had a feeling that he might get the ball. <laughs> he has not gotten the ball very often in his career. So this is a special moment for him. All the dirty work that fullbacks do to get rewarded in a, in a game that's a regular season game. Six, Good to see. six carries in seven years, as a matter <laughs> of fact. He's got six today. On this, the 12th play of the drive. Mahomes right at the yard to gain is Demarcus Robinson. Tackled by Rios. When I watched Mahomes in the preseason, I left shaking my head. I didn't know how good he truly was until I watched him in the preseason. Today has just confirmed that for me. Watch him drop here. He's got the arm strength to just kind of flick this ball, not even step into the throw, kind of flat-footed, but can put it exactly where he wants. That's what the GMs talk about when they talk about rare arm strength. 14 to 23 on the day, approaching 200 yards passing. Off the puck, into the end zone, just overthrew Robinson. But that was an excellent throw. He put it where only his receiver could get it. It's a ball that Robinson could have gone up and got. Mahomes wanted him to make that play. You can see he's a little frustrated. Second year man out of Florida looking for his first touchdown catch of the season. Hey. 
second quarterback chosen in the draft this year behind Mitchell Trubisky. He's seen Trubisky and Kaiser and Deshaun Watson all get starts this year. Getting his chance today. Out of the backfield, Sherman. One man to get by. It looks like he's got the first down out of bounds around the four yard line. Went right over Rios. Watch Sherman right here come out of the backfield. And Mahomes does an excellent job understanding the defense and how they collapsed inside and goes on time to Sherman. That allows him to get down the field. The old axiom, if, you're, if you wait, you're late. Patrick Mahomes did not wait. An excellent job playing very well for a guy who sat on the bench all season long, hasn't been in there, really hasn't gotten reps. Because when you're the backup, you're not getting a lot of starting reps. Mahomes. Robinson fighting for it, does not get in. Good play by Demonte Thomas to hold him up until his buddies came to finish it off, including Brandon Langley. You're at the goal line, you can't wait. You have to explode and make the play an excellent job getting through the block and then making the tackle, keeping him out of the end zone. Another Michigan product getting an opportunity. Penalty flags in the secondary. Tuning in on defense. The penalties half the distance to the goal line. Still second down. Still got 12 of them out there. You can see all the guys here. Way too many guys. That's 13, 13 guys, right yeah. <laughs> when you're playing so many young players, there oftentimes is confusion. Yeah. You're trying to sub. You're at the goal line. Which package do you want in there? 13th play of the drive. Mahomes to Sherman. Stuffed. Shaq Barrett. And it was Adam Gotsis who blew it up. Excellent penetration. Getting into the backfield. Not allowing Anthony Sherman to get started. Gatsas just beat his man off the line to get quickly into the backfield, and now it's third and goal. I'd like to see Mahomes get out of the pocket, the ability to throw on the run. Mahomes, back shoulder incomplete, looking for Robinson. Hit him on the hip, and now it's fourth down. He went to Robinson a couple of times on this drive. It wasn't a bad throw. Robinson didn't get his head around quite on time. If it was a little higher, it's an easy catch, but that's a ball you want to throw it to the back hip of the receiver because the defender can't make a play on it. That's the correct spot to put that ball. Could be a big win here for the Denver defense to hold Kansas City to just the three. This will be a 20-yard attempt for Harrison Butker, who's already made 36 field goals this season to his new franchise record. Harrison Bucker continuing to have a phenomenal year for the Chiefs. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. That's transparency. T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. And by Acura Season of Performance event. Every day is a good day to hit the slopes at a place like Winter Park that uh, spawned future Olympians like Michaela Schifrin and Lindsey Vaughn. And rumors running rampant that Jay Feely may hit those similar slopes tomorrow and give it a go. I might have to go with our director, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Friedman, I, I, do we need to figure out who's going to be on the bunny slope and who's skiing the... Skiing the Black Diamonds? We're both Floridians. Okay, Bunny Slope I, I, ski, I tried to snowboard last year with my kids <laughs> for about 20 seconds. Took that off real quick. Touchdown lead for KC here in the third. 17 to 10, Kansas City with the lead over Denver. Final regular season game. The uh, Broncos missing out on the playoffs for the second year in a row. The Chiefs are ready to head back. They will host. Next weekend, as C.J. Anderson gets the carry, 
on a first down and 10. The AFC playoff picture, the top four seeds are set. New England has home field advantage. Baltimore right now trailing. Tennessee and Buffalo are both winning. If that stood, Tennessee would be the five seed. Buffalo would be the six seed. Tennessee up 12 right now. The Chargers win as, and as well. They're up 13. Got an injured player uh, actually between snaps. one of the linemen just as they broke the huddle. Just gonna take a knee. That's number 99, Rakeem Nunez Rochez, the third year man out of Southern Miss. getting uh, his 11th start today. Born and originally from the country of Belize, made his way to the United States, played his high school ball in Alabama. It's released last year, came back. Bob Sutton told us he's got a great motor, that he made himself into a player, willed himself into a player. It's a guy they want to have in the playoffs for depth. These are the kind of injuries they don't want to see happen. You've talked about it, Jay. A couple of things that they're going to have to do right next week is force some turnovers, but also have a stout run defense, and a guy like that may be a pivotal player for them. Yeah, and Bob Sutton said when it comes to run defense for us, it's all about coordination, understanding where your gaps are, and winning the individual battles. They struggled throughout that losing streak. They struggled to stop the run, kind of get it fixed. It was interesting because he said that it really happened in the Dallas game, which they gave up some rushing yards to Ezekiel Elliott in that game, but he kind of got it fixed. And then going forward, yep. the second half of the year, they were much better. You may be running into an Alex Collins or a Derrick Henry or a Shady McCoy next week. Second and six here for the Broncos and Paxton Lynch. Play action with C.J. Anderson and Lynch gets sacked. Ball squirts out. Scramble for it. Chiefs come up with it. And it's going to be a scoop and a score. Rameek Wilson, touchdown KC. Chris Jones is the guy that got to the quarterback, Paxton Lynch. Paxton Lynch not delivering the ball on time, sitting in the pocket, not understanding where the pressure is coming from. He loses the ball. And Rameek Wilson, one of those guys, taking advantage of, of his opportunities. He's got seven tackles on the game, and now he gets the touchdown to add to that. The turnover troubles continue for Denver, and the defense for Kansas City making a play. 14th defensive score in the last three years, the most in the NFL. Harrison Butker, extra point is good. 3.04 to play, and it's 24 10, Chiefs. Lynch with an interception and a fumble, and Casey makes him pay. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Back here in Denver where the Kansas City Chiefs have opened up a 24 to 10 lead over the Denver Broncos looking to beat Denver for the fifth time in a row. A stretch that they have not enjoyed since the early 1970s as the Kansas City Chiefs have really taken over the division the last two years. Henderson bringing it out and cut down around the 20-yard line. A lot of talk, of course, about the quarterback debut of Patrick Mahomes today, but the defense 
making its presence felt as well. They get a touchdown of their own. Yeah, and you love seeing that. You love seeing the young guys get an opportunity like Wilson, making plays. And Bob Sutton, I think he's a phenomenal defensive coordinator, creative, has all these different looks, different fronts, creates pressure in so many different ways, creating turnovers. That's what they've done the last four weeks, 10, 11 turnovers now the last four weeks. Haven't seen a whole lot of the starters today. Guys like Marcus Peters and Derek Johnson and, and uh, Justin Houston. As they get ready for the playoffs, final three minutes of this third quarter, and Paxton Lynch with a couple of turnovers. Trying to get back to work here, finds Benny Fowler. Run out by Kenneth Acker, and that'll be good for the first down. An update on the chase for 1,000. Demarius Thomas just 51 yards receiving, none so far in the second half. C.J. Anderson 39 yards rushing. He needed to get to 54 to break 1,000 for the first time in his career. He'll pick up a few more there. Of course, as you move forward for this Denver team, certainly we've talked about addressing the coach addressing quarterback and then you start looking right jay at some of your veterans who who do you think you might move on from who are the free agents we might target how do we get ready for the draft where they'll likely have a top 10 pick possibly as high as six lynch chased down and taken down yukimwe iligwe the rookie out of georgia southern who was picked in the fifth round it all starts at the quarterback position. You have to have a quarterback to be successful in this league. They used a first round pick and picked Lynch. They've gone through three different guys, five different changes at the quarterback position this year. It's been a tough year for Vance Joseph in his first year. We talked about the change at the offensive coordinator position, changing quarterbacks. You want stability yes. when you're a first-time head coach. He'd only been a defensive coordinator for one year prior to getting the head coaching job. Paxton Lynch on third and six, sacked at the 30-yard line. Taken down by Tono Passigno, the rookie they wanted to get a look at today, and he's opened some eyes. He did a good job here coming up the middle, beating his defender, coming back and making the play, and that's when Lynch has to know when to get rid of the ball. Bill Musgrave said, know when to use your arm, know when to use your leg, and know when to ditch it. Twice in the last two drives, he hasn't gotten rid of the ball. Benefiting from guys uh, like Justin Houston and Tom Bahali, the veterans who have been instructing him this year. Robinson there with the fair catch. How about a look at the NFC playoff picture where Philadelphia will be the top seed. Minnesota has locked up the number two seed. They will have the buys next week. Still some uh, possibilities, Jay, for movement amongst the Rams, the Saints, and the Panthers. Atlanta right now is winning. Seattle is losing. If Atlanta wins, they are in. Atlanta up six on Carolina. That has a big impact on New Orleans. Who wins that division? New Orleans up four right now on Tampa Bay. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes. Still searching for that first touchdown pass or run of his career getting his first start today. He's really enjoyed spending some time with Albert Wilson, who's just made his sixth catch, and he's approaching 100 yards on the day. Looks like the Chiefs are just going to let it wind down and head to the fourth quarter. He's smiling, having fun. That was one of his keys. Go out there, enjoy yourself. Have fun and soak up the moment. That's the end of the third quarter. Kansas City with a 24 to 10 lead. Scoring points off the sack. The scoop and score will return after this message and word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Four to ten, Kansas City leading Denver as we head to the fourth. Here at Sports Authority Field, at mile high, the receiver screen for Albert Wilson out across the 45-yard line. 
Nice little screen. Excellent blocking out front by the receivers. Creating the seam. Quickly get the ball. Look at this blocking right here. Great job. Creating the opportunity to get up the field and get the first down. Will Parks, 34, is Robinson injured. Robinson J.U. Chesson making the blocks there. Parks getting uh, some attention there from the athletic trainers. And a catch, by the way, for Albert Wilson. And a season high for him, seven catches, 107 yards. That's a new career high now for Albert Wilson. Albert Wilson's a great playmaker, a guy who doesn't get a ton of opportunity because he backs up Tyreek Hill. Oh, he's got 40, 39 receptions so far on the year. We'll take a break and be right back. Will Parks assisted to the Denver sideline. He's out right now. First and 10, Kansas City with a 24-10 lead early in this fourth quarter. Approaching midfield. Anthony Sherman is the tailback right now, deep in the eye. More carries today than he's had in his entire seven-year career. That's because Kareem Hunt only took one snap today, and that was good enough to move him ahead of Todd Gurley for most rushing yards in the NFL this season. Without Gurley being active or Le'Veon Bell being active, LaShawn McCoy of Buffalo was the only guy that could really get himself into the mix. He has not run for a lot of yards today. So it would appear that Kareem is in line to become the sixth rookie to win the rushing title since the merger. On second and eight, Sherman hit in the backfield. How about the other five guys to do it? Ezekiel Elliott last year, Edger and James, Eric Dickerson, George Rogers, Earl Campbell. That's some good company. I did a number of the Toledo games over the last couple of years when Kareem Hunt was back. I really liked him. Had no idea who's going to be this good. I don't think anybody did. We were doing the, the preseason game up in Seattle, and I told Dan Fouts, I pointed at Kareem Hunt. I said, keep an eye on him. He's going to be yeah. a good one. That was the game that Ware got hurt and gave Hunt the opportunity to start, and he took it and ran with it. They liked him so much, they released Jamal Charles. Uh, they considered C.J. Spiller. They had Sharkandrick West, the veteran, coming back, and Hunt just had himself a season. Mahomes on the run, and the pass is incomplete. The report in that Buffalo-Miami game, by the way, McCoy with an ankle injury. That's why he's only rushed for 10 yards today as uh, Buffalo uh, hoping to play their way into the postseason and end a 17-year playoff drought. That would be huge for Western New York. They're still in the chase. Fourth down coming up here for Kansas City. Jordan Taylor back at his own 10-yard line. High end over end kick short. Fair catch at the 19. 24-10 KC, you're watching the NFL on CBS. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Tostitos. Tostitos gives back to Salvation Army. Verizon best gifts on the best network and by the Home Depot more saving more doing welcome back to Denver where the uh, Kansas City Chiefs have the 24 to 10 lead first career rushing touchdown today for Anthony Sherman the defense also getting a score off of the Chris Jones sack and the scoop and score for Rameek Wilson. And now Paxton Lynch will try and get the Broncos going again. The handoff to C.J. Anderson, creeping ever closer to that 1,000-yard mark. Needed 54 coming in. He's got 51. You mentioned it earlier, Beth, how important that is to an offensive line. They take a lot of pride 
And getting a back to 1,000 yards and a guy like C.J. Anderson who's so well-liked on that team. If he gets the first down here, he'll get 1,000. Anderson off the left side and C.J. Anderson, a 1,000-yard season, the first in Denver in five years. One thousand seven, the first thousand yard season of his career, the fifth year man out of Cal who came into the league an undrafted free agent and what a journey it's been for CJ overcoming injuries. All the hard work in the off season to get a full schedule in. And he's getting a nice hand right now from the crowd as Paxton Lynch Hooks up with Jordan Taylor down to the 36-yard line. Well, excellent job by Jordan Taylor to go up and get his feet in bounds. Great throw by Paxton Lynch. Here's the left foot, and here comes the right foot. Oh, that oh. might be out. Broncos they haven't challenged. There's yeah, the challenge there flag. <laughs> Kansas City is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed catch. Andy Reid to uh, drop the challenge flag. Uh, it appears to be right on this one. The left foot was definitely down. It's the right foot as Taylor comes down. It's just going to be out right there. You can see the toe touching the line. Good effort by Taylor and an excellent throw by Paxton Lynch. That's where you want to put that ball up high so your receiver can go up and make the play on his outside shoulder so the defender has no opportunity to make a play. And this is a really important corner for Paxton Lynch. Once again, you can see that he's out of bounds just barely. I think this will be overturned incomplete. Good look from our truck. You can see the right foot. Play under review back in New York. Call on the field is a catch. Casey with the challenge. Stands uh, good for 27 yards. Chiefs and Broncos, however, are already walking back to the uh, previous line of scrimmage. We've seen it on the Jumbotron. Thing out the, figuring out the time, exactly where to put the ball. I said this was such an important quarter for Paxton Lynch. He had to speed up his clock, the internal clock, because the last two series, slow to get rid of the ball, took a sack, and then another sack, and a sack fumble that led to a touchdown. After reviewing the play, the receiver's second foot came down out of bounds, therefore it is an incomplete pass. We'll bring up second down, 11 minutes, 29 seconds, level 29 on the game clock. Kansas City will not be charged with a timeout. So a good challenge there for Kansas City, and uh, that will put Denver back, uh, the ball placed at their own 37-yard line. John Elway was interviewed this week about the quarterback play. Said it's 50% physical, 50% what is their makeup? How do they handle when the world caves in? And you know, Paxton Lynch has had his struggles this year with injuries. Came into camp, was playing really well, and then got hurt in the preseason against San Francisco. Your, your options in house: Lynch, Brock Osweiler. The injured Trevor Simeon. And Chad Kelly. And Chad Kelly, who hasn't had a chance to play. Uh, the last man picked in the draft this year on a full miss. He's been on the NFI, the non-football injury list all year, along with another draft pick, Jake Butt, their fifth-round pick, the tight end out of Michigan. Chad Kelly, the nephew of former Bills great Jim Kelly. 
Lynch hit as he throws. The catch by Benny Fowler out across midfield. And there's going to be a flag for a low hit on the quarterback there. You're exactly right, Beth. Jarvis Jenkins. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 94, the low hit to the quarterback. 15 yard penalty to the end of the run. First down, Denver. Here comes, he hits, he does get blocked, but he goes low, hits right at Lynch's knees. It's been a priority this year to try and take that out of the game. So many quarterbacks, you think back to Tom Brady and Carson Palmer and the guys that Torn ACLs on hits just like that. After the penalty, Denver down to the 34-yard line. Lynch on first down. And the catch is made by Jordan Taylor for a pickup of eight. It has uh, it's been five quarterback changes using three different guys, Jake. And the biggest problem with all these guys was the turnovers this year throwing interceptions. They've run the ball well. They have the second rated defense in the NFL. Their special teams has let them down this year and their quarterback play has let them down. And that's why a lot of Bronco fans think that the solution will be either in a veteran, do you go free agent, say a Kirk Cousins? Do you like your options again in the draft? You're going to have a high pick. We saw John Elway doing some scouting at bowl games recently. Elway and Kubiak were at the Cotton Bowl. They're watching Sam Darnold. Yep. They might go to watch Baker Mayfield at the Rose Bowl. Saw Josh Allen in the Potato Bowl. Yep. Allen has already oh! said he's coming out. Hey! Darnold still with a decision to make. Lynch to Taylor fighting his way. Going to be about a yard shy. Dur uh, Darrell Rebus making the play there. The 11th year veteran out of Pitt. We had a conversation with Bob, Bob Sutton about Revis. I played with Drell when he was the best cornerback in the NFL at New York. Now he doesn't have the recovery speed, but he's still excellent on the line of scrimmage, understands offensive concepts, where the receiver is going to go. He's been on a pitch count the last uh, four or five games. He could be a big plus for them in the postseason. There's Revis making another play. Here's some of the quarterbacks that may be up there, including Josh Rosen at UCLA and uh, Lamar Jackson, will he or won't he be a quarterback at the next level? Yeah, I think he would be somebody that you move from the quarterback position. Such an unbelievable athlete. Of all those guys, I like Josh Allen the best. Lynch, under duress and down he goes. Another big play in the second sack for Tano Passigno with some help from Jarvis Jenkins. They wanted to see Tano Passigno, what he can do. You can see how big he is. We met him yesterday. He's an imposing man, but he's got great speed, the ability to run to the ball. They took him off of the line of scrimmage, although he was down with his hand on the ground there and moved him back and put his hand off of the ground. It's the first time he's ever done that. He said, I really like it because I get to see so much more of what happens on the offense. But a guy, they expect a lot from going forward. And at 6-7, you can see a lot. Second and 20 for Paxton Lynch. Incomplete. You mentioned that you like Josh Allen the best. Well, he's got all the tangibles he's he can throw the ball he's got a big arm he can run he's mobile he's smart he hasn't had the weapons he lost a lot of their weapons yep. at wyoming so he struggled some this year but i think that's more a product of not having the guys to be able to utilize than it is a reflection of josh allen or the tough schedule right playing at wyoming sure. hasn't had power five opponents every week yeah third and 20 here for paxton lynch none of their players were drafted out of wyoming out of the gun. Passigno was given chase again, and Paxton Lynch will run out of bounds around the 16-yard line. And now it's going to be fourth down. Of course, the greatest quarterback they've ever had here will be uh, instrumental in that decision-making process. We read some reports uh, that looking on? Gary Kubiak will have a bigger role. He came back in July. 
evaluates offensive talent. They're going for it here in fourth and 15. Why not? 7.15 to go in their season. Lynch intercepted at the one yard line. Picked off by Terrence Mitchell and he'll run it back all the way out across the 40 yard line. It's the third turnover for Lynch today. Another. Second, second time Lynch has been late with the ball. You can't afford to be late in the NFL. Chiefs make him pay. Tyler Bray active for the first time this season will now come on at quarterback for Kansas City. Fifth year man out of Tennessee. And a miscue on the handoff and it's picked up by Zaire Anderson. And he'll score for Denver. Six yards and the Broncos are back within a score. When you bring a new quarterback in, you got a guy who's not used to carrying the ball, Anthony Sherman. He's normally the fullback. They have trouble with the handoff. And Anderson takes it all the way in for a touchdown. Boy, you got a feel for a guy there in Bray who hasn't played all season and on his first play from scrimmage can't hook up with Sherman and Buffalo but Brandon McManus makes it 24-17 still 6.52 to go but here's what's been going on around the NFL from earlier today of course uh, news out of New England they clinch home field for the win over the Jets In the NFC, the Minnesota Vikings beat the Bears. They lock up the number two seed. They'll have a bye next week. And Pittsburgh will also have a bye in the AFC playoffs as the Cleveland Browns finish 0-16. Here's an updated playoff picture. Tennessee, Buffalo, and the Chargers are all winning. Baltimore is losing. That's all that remains, just the two wild card spots. And who will it be for Kansas City in Arrowhead next week you talk about a fan base starved for a home playoff win they haven't had one since january of 1994. well baltimore were to lose and tennessee were to win the way it stands right now and they play tennessee that's the team if i'm the chiefs that i want to play tennessee has been struggling they go with an onside kick here now they kick it deep Chiefs will not bring it out. We've got an upstate from the studio. Let's go to New York. James Brown, Boomer Esiason. Take a look at Atlanta. How about a day for Matt Bryan? Four field goals today. This one is a 56 yarder. They take or add on to their lead 19 to 10. Back to Denver. Thank you, guys. So the NFC, it's uh, really come down to Atlanta and Seattle. And if Atlanta wins, they are in. Seattle is losing right now. And Atlanta is a dangerous team. They've been under the radar. They lost a number of close games throughout the year. But obviously they were the team that was in the Super Bowl that had a lead 28 to three on the Patriots last year and blew it. Tyler Bray back out there at quarterback. This time the exchange, a better one with Anthony Sherman for a short game. So Philadelphia and Minnesota will have next weekend off. And the Rams, New Orleans, and Carolina all still jockeying for position. Atlanta and Seattle looking to grab that last spot. Six minutes left in that Atlanta game. They're up nine. That's a very talented team, much like this Kansas City Chiefs team. At times has struggled throughout the year, but skill-wise as good as anybody in the NFL. Would anybody, Jay, have guessed those four teams as the the top four in the NFC when the year started. You know, when you consider the top two have lost their starting quarterback. Yeah. Minnesota early in the year with Sam Bradford and Carson Wentz going down when he was an MVP candidate. Nick Foles taking over. 
I think you'd have to like the chances, wouldn't you? The veteran quarterback, Drew Brees, in New Orleans, or Cam Newton, who's already been to a Super Bowl with Carolina. I always lean towards the veteran quarterback, the guy who has experience, who's been there, who understands how to get it done in the pressure moments. You know, it was interesting, Beth. Chiefs did not hide Patrick Mahomes. They wanted to see him play. He threw the ball 30 times. 18 for 30, 232 yards with an interception. Did not have a touchdown today. I thought he played really well, though. He, he looked good out there. It wasn't too big for him. He threw the early interception, came back, and didn't shy away from making difficult throws. Broncos looking for a stop to get the ball back here with a chance to tie it up. Blitz coming off the edge. Bray's pass is short, incomplete. And Denver forces the punt. Such a loyal fan base here in Denver. Excited, still cheering despite the struggles they've had this year. It would go a long way to make it a little bit more palatable to get a win in the last game of the season if they can find a way to come back and win this game. A smile on the sideline for Patrick Mahomes making his NFL debut. He'll uh, return to that backup spot behind Alex Smith for the uh, playoffs next week in all likelihood. And then some big decisions to be made in the offseason. Jordan Taylor off the bounce out to the 39. 516 to work with for the Broncos here in the fourth. So what's Kansas City possibly got in store? Well, Baltimore struggled the first half of the season offensively. The second half of the season, they've been excellent offensively, scored more points than anybody else. Tennessee has been in a downward spiral over the last six weeks. They're a team that's struggling. Their quarterback position is unsettled, not playing well. Marcus Mariota and Buffalo, we've seen them continuing to find ways to win their low-scoring games, and Tyrod Taylor deserves a lot of credit for that team trying to break the streak and get him into the playoffs. Paxton Lynch. The catch by Benny Fowler down to the 41. Denver working some tempo here. Tempo is what Paxton Lynch is used to. That's what he's comfortable with, being in the shotgun. That's what he did at Memphis. Gain of 22 there. Oh, Working out of the gun again. Under five to go. They'll run it. D'Angelo Henderson for a couple. And on a day where C.J. Anderson got over 1,000 yards rushing on the season. They uh, go back to Henderson here late. As soon as he did, they took him out, put yep. the jackets on. You saw everybody go over and congratulate him. I believe his day is done. Lynch giving some directions and then runs out of bounds. He wanted one of his young receivers to break off the route and go deep. Whenever your quarterback comes out and he's scrambling, you got to adjust from your route and break deep. You're going to see everybody covered here. And then he's waiting for one of these guys, either Taylor in the middle to come up or one of these two to come up. You got a safety deep and nobody broke up, so he was smart with the ball, tucked it and got a couple yards. Yeah, the Chiefs had Kenneth Acker playing some deep center field on that one. It's third and seven here. Lynch wide open is Devontae Booker, first down to the 11-yard line. Got him on the wheel route. Mistake in the Chiefs defense. See him come right out here. Nobody recognized it. Wide open, and Paxton Lynch delivers the ball. When you bench four of your starters, you're playing all young guys. Mistakes like that are going to happen. You have to communicate. Gain Bob Sutton's defense was unable to do that. Gain of 25 there. Back to the ground. Booker down to the six-yard line. Gonna let that clock work. 
You want enough time if you do get the touchdown to be able to get a stop and get it back and try and kick a game-winning field goal. Lynch dropped by Demarius Thomas, who has come back on for Kansas City. Knocked out of there by Leon McQuay. Zone read, and they're coming out, delivering a ball that should have been caught. Now it's third and four. They can get a first down at the two-yard line. They're going to run for it. Henderson trying to get to the edge, and he's cut down by Terrence Mitchell. Fourth down, Denver. Excellent job by Mitchell coming up, not allowing him to get to the edge. They lose contain here, and yet Mitchell comes up and makes up for it. Great open field tackle. The league way is supposed to have contained, should have came up the field. He got sucked inside. That's what you have your safeties for. Come up and make up for it, and Broncos are going for it on fourth down. Andy Reid running down the sideline to call the timeout. Kansas City takes its first timeout. This will be a 30-second timeout. Fourth and four, 2.58 to play. Denver down a touchdown. I think that's a good timeout by Andy Reid. Allow Bob Sutton to get his defense settled, talk to these young guys, help them understand what the call is going to be, what your responsibilities are. We saw yesterday when we were watching Denver practice, just the communication that has to happen with all the young guys. They were yelling, yeah. trying to get people lined up. you got so many guys that are playing for the first time. Very similar to a preseason game. Paxton Lynch trying to tie it up. Trips left. Lynch to the back of the end zone. Touchdown to Marius Thomas. Lynch looking for his favorite receiver. Just a little corner route. Excellent job by Lynch delivering the ball. Confusion in that secondary. You got somebody falls down. Mitchell. Thomas is wide open. Mitchell just made the nice tackle. It's tripped up and falls down. That's an easy completion. But for Lynch, so important for him to drive down the field. A nice drive by him. Good throws. For the tie, it's good. And it appears that we will get another look at Patrick Mahomes as well. He's been warming up on the Kansas City sideline to run the two-minute drill with a 24-all game. Yeah, you wouldn't normally bring him back into the game after you brought him up, but Beth, just like you said, it's 2.53. It's a tie game. You want experience for him. Perfect situation to bring him in and say, hey, these are the kind of situations when you're the starting quarterback that you're going to have. You have two minutes, 53 seconds. You have two timeouts. Drive us down the field and let our rookie kicker kick a game winner. When you say there's nothing on the line, nothing at, at stake today, of course, <laughs> only people's futures, right? right? Only guys' jobs. Only you, a, a glimpse into the future for your franchise. For both teams. And I've been in that situation. It's hard when you're Denver and you have five wins and you're in the last game of the season to come out. But you can tell a lot about your team by the guys who work hard, who have a great attitude, who keep doing everything you want despite the fact that you've struggled. They're not going to kick it outside here. Albert Wilson. He's going to have a chance here from the three. And here comes Mahomes back into the game. You can see his numbers, 18 for 30. They've certain, th certainly thrown the ball a lot. Had the one interception early. Has come back for that, played a really good game. And now a perfect situation for them to put him in an opportunity to win the game. And on the Denver side, when we talked to Von Miller yesterday, he said, what are you playing for? He said, well, not only pride, but it's an honor and a privilege to put the jersey on 
every week you dream about playing in the NFL, and now you got a chance to try and take on the rookie quarterback. Mahomes sacked to Marcus Walker. The second round pick out of Florida State. Denver has two timeouts. They're not using one of theirs. Right up the middle, getting a big sack. They've been waiting all year for him to make plays. Has not had a good year. His second round pick, as you said, only four tackles coming into the game. That's not the production you want from a second round pick. A guy who you thought would be an excellent outside linebacker, a pass rushing threat. Had 28 and a half sacks at FSU. Big time player, won a national championship there. Von Miller leading from the sideline right now. He's been a terrific mentor to a lot of the younger guys. We got a tie game. You're watching the NFL on CBS. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Cricket Wireless. Something to smile about. And by Bud Light. Proved to be enjoyed responsibly. Fourteen points in under four minutes for the Broncos and Denver has tied it up. Two minutes to go. Rookie Patrick Mahomes on second and 17. Albert Wilson hangs on to the football. Did he get out of bounds? No. And now they will stop the clock here. One Denver to called go. Timeout. Denver out. called another timeout. Because Kansas City is going to be short of the first down. So you know they, if they get a stop here, they can use their last timeout if the clock is running. Nice little screen, good blocking out front. Wilson here, I thought when he bounced he was going to get outside, but he tried to get upfield, couldn't get out of bounds and stop the clock. Wilson having a career day, eight catches, 120 yards. Third down and four for the Chiefs. They've still got a couple of timeouts left. Denver showing pressure. Blitzing off the edge. Mahomes looking to go over the top. It's caught but out of bounds. And a flag is down. I think the Broncos jumped the gun and just gave the Chiefs the first down. Yeah, they sure did. They were showing pressure, trying to bring the blitz and get it. Offside. Defense, number 57. It's a five-yard penalty. First down, Kansas City. That's Walker, who had the sack just a moment ago. Right here. Right over the no. center was 51. Davis. Big penalty. You had to stop. You were going to get the ball back. The clock stopped on the incompletion. Kansas City's kicker, Harrison Butker, his career long, a 53-yarder. Mahomes trying to get him closer, heading the wrong way, and still has the arm strength to hit Demarcus Robinson. What a play. I'm shaking my head. Just throw it away. Don't throw it. Don't throw it. And he throws it and completes it. It's exactly what he did in Seattle in the preseason. Same kind of play. Rolling out. He should throw this ball away. But he finds his receiver. Does such an excellent job keeping his vision downfield and just rips it back across his body. Beautiful throw. Threw it 25 yards for a 12-yard gain and a first down. Four-man rush this time. Wilson underneath in the Denver territory and out of bounds at the 43. Game nice touch on this ball by Mahomes. Understanding the defense, going to the open receiver, knowing exactly where to go. And they're almost in field goal range. There's Butker. He kicked the 60-yarder and warm-ups going this exact way. It's thin air. You know what? The, the cold negates it a little bit, but I showed you in Warren's when he went back to 60, had no problem. That's about where they're at right now. Mahomes on the move, puts it up for grabs. Incomplete into double coverage. 
that was not a good decision. Throwing into double coverage, could have thrown an interception there. You're basically in field goal range already. Don't take unnecessary risks. That's youthful exuberance right there. Just flung the ball up there for anybody to catch. <laughs> Living to fight another That's day right. after that one. He was a little grateful that they didn't pick that off. Second and 10, 121 to play. You'd like about another 10 yards to feel really comfortable. Wilson again, inside the 35, first down and shoved out of bounds. 114 to go. Nice stem route by Wilson. Comes in like he's running an in cut, just puts it, the brakes on and goes back out. You're gonna see him come in and then put the brakes on, create separation. Excellent job by Wilson. What a game he's having. Tenth catch, 147 yards. And Patrick Mahomes is trying to keep his fellow rookie kicker, Harrison Butker, on the sideline here. Driving him down inside the 30. Now it's a matter of managing the game. That's a good timeout here by Kansas City and Andy Reid. takes its second timeout. 30-second timeout. The last drafted quarterback to win a game for Kansas City was Todd Blackledge in 1987. Last drafted by the Chief. That's unbelievable. <laughs> You like this situation here for Mahomes because now you're in field goal range. Now you utilize the clock, use up the clock, position it for your kicker, be smart with the ball here. You don't have any of your normal running backs in there. You got Anthony Sherman, the fullback, who fumbled the ball earlier but also had a touchdown. We're going to run the option play and the pitch to Sherman for a couple of yards. Brandon Marshall hit him out. I don't know if that was in Cliff King, Kingsbury's playbook at Tech. No, but it's something they've done with Alex Smith throughout the year. Alex Smith has run the options. He's done a very good job running the ball at 355 yards rushing this year. They're running their offense with Mahomes. That was a dangerous play call there when you're already in field goal range. Not only that, it went out of bounds and stopped, stopped the, clock. the clock. You don't need to do that anymore. Second and eight. Mahomes will keep. Lunges down to about the 22. It'll be third down, and are the Broncos going to burn yes. their last time out? They will. In the season opener, here against the Los Angeles Chargers, the Denver special team, Shelby Harris, they blocked a field goal attempt by the Chargers rookie kicker to preserve the win. Can they bookend the season with a big play here late to at least try and force OT? Well, if you're Kansas City, you run the ball here, you run it all the way down and call a timeout and bring your kicker in to win the game and Harrison Butker has had an unbelievable year for the Kansas City Chiefs. They brought him in. He missed the first month of the season. He was drafted by Carolina. Then he was on the practice squad and they signed him off of the practice squad. Sherman first down. Your fullback's playing tailback. Your tight end's playing fullback. They're having and fun. They get it. <laughs> and they They're get enjoying it. it. Excellent for Anthony Sherman being the fullback, doing the grunt work, blocking for the backs. He finally gets a day where he gets the ball. In his previous 107 games, he's rushed for 14. Today he's got 36 and his first career rushing touchdown. He'll get the call again, lumbering down to the 12. Clock continues to move. So you bring it down here, call timeout with three seconds left. 
And then bring Bucker in to kick a game winner. And even though this is a meaningless game for Kansas City, this is a big kick for Harrison Bucker as you go into the playoffs, yep. thinking about next week. Because when you have a game winner and the pressure of a game winner, regardless if the game matters or not, that can have an impact both positively and negatively on you going forward into the playoffs. He's had an unbelievable year for the Chiefs. He's done everything they ever could have hoped when they signed him and brought him in to replace Santos. Your rookie quarterback drives you down the field to put you in position to win it. And now it's on the leg of your rookie kicker. Remember, they got the first down because Denver jumped off sides. Chiefs come to Denver and get a 27-24 win.